Inside this video right here, I'm going to talk about three major lessons you need to know if you're getting ready for your AMT and REMT exam. Here we go. Hey everyone, Evan the Paramedic Coach. I'm so excited for you to get the content in this video. Make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe as well, and let's dive in to the video. Now here we go. First piece we got here is gonna be our receptor lesson. This is one of the main cornerstones of understanding how to become an advanced DMT is understanding what a receptor is. Now here we go. So a receptor in the body, what it is, is there are all types of receptors you're gonna learn about in the body. This particular type is very important when we talk about emergency medicine because what it does. Now here, we see we have the alpha one, the beta one, and the beta two receptor. Those are their names. So remember, we have in medicine, now put on the board here, we have an agonist, and then we have an antagonist. So remember, when a drug enters the body and it binds to one of these receptors and it turns it on, it activates it, that drug acts as a agonist. When a drug enters and binds to one of these receptors and blocks the receptor from being turned on, blocks it off or kicks a drug off it, blocking it, that's an antagonist. To give you an example, an agonist is a drug, for example, I'll give you here, an agonist would be albuterol, would be epinephrine. An antagonist would be naloxone, Narcan, okay? Now these are AMT drugs, by the way. Here we have these receptors. This is the effect that the receptors have when they are turned on by a drug. Now here we go. So the alpha-1 receptors, when they are turned on, when they're activated, you're gonna get vasoconstriction, which is going to increase the patient's blood pressure. So alpha-1, think mass clamp down, vasoconstriction, that's when alpha-1 is turned on, okay? Now with any one of these, you're gonna get the opposite effect if it was blocked. And there are meds that can block these receptors. You get the opposite effect. Okay, I'm talking here about activation, turn on, okay? Now, the beta-1 receptor, when it is turned on, you're gonna see an increase, it's a big word here, it's a very important word in medicine, contractility. What that is, is the increase of the strength of contractions of the heart, which is what the heart is designed to do, contract, increase strength of contractions and increase heart rates. That is the beta-1 activation, okay? So what we say is beta-1, we have one heart. That's how you remember it. Now with beta-2, we have two lungs, okay? So it has to do with the lungs, okay? What does it do? It's going to bronchodilate in the bronchioles, my friends, okay? So that's right here has to do with the lungs. Now, I'm gonna clean this board and we're gonna come back. I'm gonna show you two medications that are AMT medications that affect on this, and then we're gonna dive into one more lesson. Here we go. Hey, great job getting through that first lesson. We're moving on to the next lesson here, and now we're talking about advanced EMT medications. Now, I wanna highlight two of these medications that are so important. Now, first, as you can see here, we're gonna start with the drug epinephrine. Now epinephrine, there's two main uses inside of EMS. Okay, and the first, we're talking about our AAC. It's a mnemonic that I talk about a lot. So if you hear a wheeze, think AAC. I'll put it on the screen here. That is asthma, anaphylaxis, and COPD. Now, that has to do with epi one to 1,000. That is your ampule, you can see on the screen here, your ampule epinephrine. Okay, you gotta break it off, right? That goes intramuscular, like an epipen does intramuscular. 
Okay. Now, one of 10,000 is cardiac arrest. So you'll see on the screen here at your box epi. So it comes in a box, you can see here, okay? And that epinephrine, uh, you're not putting that in anyone's arm. That's way too much fluid. That does not make sense. That is IVIO access for cardiac arrest as part of your cardiac arrest algorithms, everybody, okay? So what does epinephrine act on? It's an agonist, means it turns on the alpha-1, the beta-1, and the beta-2 receptor. That's epinephrine. So when is it given? Two main functions, cardiac arrest, intramuscularly, could be asthma, could be anaphylaxis, could be severe COPD. There it is, okay, wheezing. Now, over here, we have albuterol. Albuterol is given Okay. Now, it could be given as a duoneb with its friend ipatropium. Okay. So, I'll let you know about that. But just let's talk about albuterol by itself. Okay. Albuterol is given, you can see here, inhalation via nebulizer, 2.5 milligram dose. Again, think AAC. So, why do we give albuterol? It acts on, it's a very important point. Hang with me here. Albuterol acts on the beta 2 receptor, but that's great because what is it going to do? It's going to open up the lungs. We talked about that. Right. But here's the thing. One of the side effects of albuterol is your patient getting slightly elevated heart rate. Why is that? So here is the secret, my friends. If you use a drug that acts on either the beta 1 or the beta 2, you will get a crossover effect to the other beta receptor. Think of the beta one, the beta two as conjoined twins. So what that means, when they manufacture the drug, it primarily will act on its chosen receptor, but there's a little bit of crossover effect. So for example, let's say your patient is given albuterol and let's say their heart rate is at, let's just go with 90, the heart rate is at 92, okay? So they're in a little distress. And their heart rate is 92. Let's say we then give it albuterol. Don't be surprised if it goes to 102, 112, even in the 120s, a jump like that. Because you get that crossover effect and the beta 1 receptor actually gets turned on as well. And what does that cause? Increase contractility, increase heart rate, right? So it's a crossover effect. So remember that with any drug that either blocks the beta receptors or turns them on you'll get a crossover effect. You get what I'm saying? Okay, now, remember, epinephrine acts on all three. There it is. Hey, great work. You got through the first two lessons. Moving on to number three, I wanna talk about allergic reaction versus anaphylaxis. This is so important and here's why. You now at the advanced DMT level, you now unlock that ALS care. And this right here is an emergency that you can really make a difference on. Now, here it is. When we're talking about the advanced DMT exam and, and working out in the field, understanding allergic reaction versus anaphylaxis. An allergic reaction is simply one body system that is affected by the allergen. Two or more body systems, and you are in anaphylaxis, which is going to trend towards anaphylactic shock if we do nothing. Just like in sepsis, you have someone that has, let's just say, a UTI, or let's say pneumonia, and then it gets into the bloodstream, and then it causes sepsis, and then severe sepsis, and then septic shock. Okay? We don't want to do that. So, with anaphylaxis, we gotta understand, if we see a patient with hives and strider, or hives and wheezing, hives and nausea vomiting, that's anaphylaxis. Well, the integumentary system is one body system. The other body system we talk about, what about GI, nausea vomiting? What about respiratory, wheezing, strider? So I'm gonna put on the screen here just to remind you these are the big signs and symptoms you got to watch out for an exam about anaphylaxis. So you can see strider, nausea vomiting, 
You can see here difficulty breathing, right? Yes, of course, hives, uticaria, okay? See it all there in the screen. Now, these two drugs we talked about earlier with the receptors, this is part of your AAC mnemonic right here. So what do we do? What do we act with these patients? Well, a simple allergic reaction patient, we're gonna get vitals, we're gonna monitor, okay? Now, if your service allows Benadryl, great, we give it. If it doesn't, okay, we're gonna talk about anaphylaxis. This is where you step up to the plate. So we have someone anaphylaxis, we gotta act quick. So, of course, we're gonna do O2, okay? Of course, we're gonna do albuterol, okay? And then the other one's gonna be our epi, okay? These main three players right here are gonna act on those alpha-1, beta-1, and beta-2 receptors to save this patient, the anaphylaxis, from going into shock. It's gonna save a life, save somebody out there. This is crucial for advanced DMT. Hey, great job getting through that advanced DMT NREMT review. I really hope you enjoyed it. Now, this video is a small portion of the NREMT review for the advanced DMT. You can see on the screen right here, these are the core content sections you need to know and be strong in these content areas to pass the NREMT exam. So what I've done is created a video study course, a video library, of over 400 videos that goes through this content area right here. You can get lifetime access by clicking the link down below. It's prepareforems.com. It includes on-the-job tips, NREMT review. It includes every single level, EMT, advanced EMT, paramedic, EMS medications, drug card, and now anatomy and physiology as well. So my friends, hit the link down below. You can get a lifetime access right now to all of that, all 400 videos, plus our private student community group to ask me questions while you're going through your journey. My friends, I'll see you there. Hope this video gave you tremendous impact and I will see you there. Let's go. Waste, don't waste any time. Don't don't be hesitant and just do it because I know this program works. And I know it's it got me to where I was, where it's been a year without school, from EMT to, hey, I passed my test in 70 questions. Like, go for it. You could do it. Like, do not hesitate and don't waste any time. People that don't know you, they need, to, they need this program. This program is not a, a choice. To me, this program is a have to. You take uh, uh, thousands and thousands of pages in the books and you just narrow it down and just make everything simple past the registry. So uh, it's, it's, it's great content, man. I promise you it's worth it. I took this with three weeks left to go in my class and I just, I'm not sure if I would have been able to pass my course or the NREMT first try without this course. The fact like when I was taking the, the national, and I would read the question and I, I would be like, whoa, Evan literally just went over this in the car. So it's, it really, it helps. I got to the point where I was just ready to spill all my knowledge onto this freaking test. So I'm like, you know what, man, just go ahead, go for it. Open it up, boom, congratulations, you passed. It was um, outside of having my children, man, it's probably the, like the happiest day of my life, bro, to be honest with you.